two mixed kebabs, yeah, salad, large cheesy, um, cheesy chips, yeah, onion rings, yeah, margarita pizza, yeah, yeah. Graham, do you want anything? Uh, just make sure there's chilli sauce with a kebab, please, Jules. So, what kebab? Uh, donna. Uh, and a small donna with a little bit of chilli sauce. Yeah, cool. All right, bye. Welcome to Fast Car TV. So G-Man. Jules. You're back on the sofa. This is what we're gonna do, what to buy. What about if you had 5,000 pound, you wanted to buy a Roadster? A Roadster. And yeah, it's gonna to have to be Japanese again, and it's gonna be a Lexus. An SC430, 4.3 liters. A little bit rounder, a little bit softer, but they use them, sort of, in the Super GT race series in Japan. And you can, if you hunt, get one for about 5K. A lot of car for your money and with the right set of wheels, air it out. Well, that is definitely a left field choice. 5,000 pound for me, you could probably get a really ratty S2000. That boss has got one of them. Oi, less of that. Really nice Mark 1 MX-5. But I'd probably go for a 350Z. Very nice indeed. I'd stay away from putting one of those dreadful exhausts on it, make it sound <laughs> Slam it on air ride. They make, airlift make a brilliant kit for the 350Z and I'm talking from experience. Can't go wrong with, uh, with airing it out on a decent set of rims, do you? Yeah, nice set of 19s, air ride. A nice cheeky wrap, perhaps. And a cheeky wrap, but yeah, there you go. So if you've got 5,000 pound in your back pocket, you're gonna buy a 350Z or a uh, Lexus SC430. There you go. So it's not actually a car product, not actually a house product, it's a product for you. And it goes on your wrist. And now, as I've got Graham here, I'm gonna start off. Mr. Initial G, what's your favorite Porsches? RWB, without a question. I think Akira Nakai is a bit of a tuning, styling gold. Ah, lucky Sam. Hey. So if you had the money, you would buy a 964? Sordista. Whatever that means. Um, so what it is, it's from Rec Watches, and so Rec Watches and RWB have collaborated to make a couple of special edition, uh, funny enough, watches. They retail at £1,444, which is uh, exactly £1,442 more than I've got. So what makes them special? Actually, the two most iconic uh, RWB cars of all time, Stella Artois and Rotana. Actually, bits of those cars are in the watches, so they are a very special edition, so they can't keep making loads of them, because obviously there's not loads of bits of the cars left. So obviously the Rotana one's got bits of purple, the Stella Auto one's got the black and gold. The strap is made from black rubber, it's got RWB logos, and it's got a quick release system. Here's a bit of blurb from the press release. It says, the body kit on the Rotana watch has incorporated the extreme signature wide body kits of the RWB cars into the design of our timepieces. So if you want a wide arched watch, this is where you go. The screws on the side of the watch are apparently a tribute to the craftsmanship of RWB as the wide body kits are fastened with screws by hand. So the case back, back of the watch, apparently that's inspired by the rims of Stella and Rotana. Oh yeah, you can see it, look. So if you're always late, love RWB Porsches, and have £1,444 in your pocket, go and get yourself a Rec X RWB timepiece. I'm sure it'll only go up in value. <laughs> so, here we are, and we're gonna do a Master of HG. Well, well, this is where we talk about a hot topic. We're gonna talk about, have cars lost a little bit of character? So you know, back in the old days, you were talking about your 205s and your Renault 5s, all quite characterful cars. So are there any cars today being built today that still got that retain a little bit of character, a little bit of the X factor. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be a pretty difficult call. Um, to be honest, I think some of the French hatches, uh, the Renaults, uh, the Megans. I think uh, Renault actually are probably one of the few manufacturers who sort of keep a little bit of that that essence of the old '80s hot hatch flavour. The other car that's not really in our sort of sector, but it's quite a cool little thing, is a Suzuki Jimny, right. which I always prefer. Years called Jimny. Yeah, as a left field option. They're cool little cars, and you can even get a Liberty Walk kit for them to make yeah. them give them a little bit. And they, what do they call it? The mini G wagon. You can turn it into a G wagon, don't you? Yeah. There's another one, and I think for me, Alfa Romeo. It'd have to be the old Julia Quadrifoglio. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think you actually well, did for one it. take. Honest. Yeah. yeah, no, I love those cars. I think if I, if I was in the market for a Super Saloon, I would actually go 
for that. It's an Alfa, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and absolutely does not have a Ferrari engine in it. So there you go. There, there are cars still with character being built today, not as many as the old days, but you can if you have a search around. Let us know what you think, in fact. It's time for Beach Car of the Week. And because we've got Graham here, Initial G, you're a bit of a Jack Car fan, as we all know. Yep, I certainly am. So we're going to talk about a car that you're actually laying out for the magazine at the minute. Or would be if I wasn't here. And it's one of my favourite Japanese cars, which is a bit of a weird one. So it's the uh, Dodge Stealth, also known as the Mitsubishi GT or GTO. Or 3000 GT. Don't see too many of them about well modified either. No, it's a bit of a, they've got a bit of a stigma in the UK, haven't they? Yeah. A bit like that with the 300ZX, people don't really know how to modify them. There's a company in Thailand called Garage Unique. This one, pretty mental. It's got a full custom Garage Unique body kit, custom bumpers, aero, custom wide arches, blended in front wings. It's got 10.5 by 19 inch work motions slammed on a custom air suspension kit because funny enough not no one makes one off the shelf garage unique bucket seats vertex steering wheel and then a full alcantara retrim insane looking thing imagine that rolling down the street in the uk yeah it'd be pretty good maybe it'll inspire some people to pick one up and and do their own take on it why not take inspiration from this and build a, a uk version and we'll quite happily come along and feature it there you go sounds like a plan anyway that's another episode of Fast Car TV wrapped up. We hope to catch you again this the same time next week. Ta-da!